I'm Yinka Adeshola. I farm, I have a farm training center in Agua Modu. Agua Modu is in Oyo State. And then what I do is, I'm a geology stone farmer. I see that there's a need for us to produce for export, for, for even satisfaction in the country. So because of that, I love farming. I went to the farm and I try to encourage more other youth to join us on the farm too. So that is what we do on the farm. And then at the farm, we have a training center where youth comes there, they get trained. After the training, we fix them up for farm work because of people that need farm managers, farm supervisors. Some are even looking for agronomists. And so after the training, we let them go and work with the farm owners because they will have had basic knowledge. Some will tell us, but I went to the university, I have a certificate, but we we'll said no. The certificate from the university is not, most work within the university is not practical work. What we do in university are mainly theory. So it is when you get into the real life on the farm that you know, wow, this is different from what I learned on the school. Like I normally tell people, I don't even have a certificate in agri, but I've been training people that have certificate in agri, people that graduate from agri, because I've been practicing, I've been doing practical work on the farm. So farming, crops, and every other thing, livestock is quite different from the one we read in the books. Okay, you see, uh, I tell people, food is a good business. Nigeria of over 180 million people, over 180 million people eat food every day. Imagine if every one of, every one of us spend 100 naira 100 per day to eat. It means, you know, you calculate that thing, we spend 100 naira per day to eat, it's a big business. But now the challenge we have is that youth felt, everybody see agri as a very tedious work. We have a new system of cultivating now, which is encouraging to youth. In this, in this system, of course, we call it raised bells. In raised bells, you make the bells, you use your, instead of weeding, you use mulching film for weeding. There's something we call mulching film. It's like a nylon. You put it down and you plant inside it. You make a hose and you plant inside it. By the time you make your crops, it comes out and there'll be no weed. So it reduces, there's no stress of weeding or bending down. In the case of water, we use drip irrigation. You just put the tank there, you fix it with water, and you set your pipes, and you have your water. So all you need to do is to come to the farm, go around, monitor, check, control the pills, and there's no weeding much, there's no work. And with this, we've been having youth in the farm coming to participate with us. When you have a farm, I tell people, when you have your farm, the way, there's a way to prevent asthma. There are crops, you see, it's been a big challenge, but there's a crop, there are crops we grow. There are certain crops that livestock doesn't like. They don't eat it. They don't even go near it. Cows, uh, goats, and everything. So all these, all these, uh, all these plants is something I advise farmers to plant around, to plant as boundary crop around the farm. For instance, on our farm, we planted castor. There's something called castor. It is castor plant. Castor plant is something that irritates even the, the the livestock, like cows and every other thing. So they won't even come near your farm. Once you have castors surrounding your farm. They don't come near your farm. Another one is Elena, Elena Alata. I don't know, in Yoruba it's called Asuo. It's a bitter something that even if human beings taste it, you start purging. So, and there's another one again that we don't call it, Jatropha. Jatropha is called Lakbalakwa. Some people know it as Lakbalakwa. If you have Jatropha surrounding your farm, there's no animals that will come near your farm. I've been preaching it to farmers. I said, look, instead of fighting or whatever, just take your time. Plant some of these things around your farm and you'll be free. I felt they underestimate what we are losing to food export. I will explain to you. Ghana yearly on fruits and vegetables alone earn about ten billion ten billion dollars from food from fruits and vegetables. We've not calculated cocoa, we've not calculated the livestock, we've not calculated some other agricultural areas that they are exporting. But the challenges we the what I understand in Nigeria, Nigeria has nothing there. There's even a, let me even tell you a story. There's a story. Currently in Nigeria, there's a cargo plane that comes to Nigeria every, that comes to Nigeria Monday to Friday. And when these cargo planes come to Nigeria importing some, some cargoes, it's still on Nigeria soil. But when it's going back, they don't have anything to go back with. So they have to go to Ghana. They use the smaller planes to go to Ghana and some other African countries. Then they bring fruit like granite. Uh, like granite, like uh, pepper, like some other things. Then they come into Nigeria soil, load onto the big cargoes, and move out again to supplement their fuel money. And yet, we are not participating in it. So it means a lot. We're losing a lot because with exports, we could hand, we can hand in dollars. With exports, we reduce unemployment. With exports, 1,000, 10,000 farmers can be in a clusters and be producing. 
You understand? And there are lots of value chain along the line too. Transportation will work. Transporters will have something to support. Transporters, women will harvest on the farm. Uh, there are people that will plant. There are people that the water and every other thing. And there will be activities. I feel we are losing more than what they estimate there. Okay, like I always tell people, they not produce a lot of food, as in vegetables, food crops, and everything. But the problem why we cannot export is that it doesn't meet quality standard. There's something called standard. And you see, like I recently they banned our beans from being exported. Why? Because it exceeds the minimum pesticide residue level. Sorry, pesticide, you know, pest is what we use to control. Pest on it. Pesticide is what we use to control pests on the farm, as in when we have challenges with pests and every other thing. But they are recommended ones that you should use because they are poisonous to human beings and to livestock. They are poisonous to us. So because these things are poisonous, outside there, they regulate how it is being used on the farm. They regulate the quantity they want to feed want you to use on the farm but here because we don't have all those resources we don't have the trainings we don't have the all the materials so we farmer uses anyhow farmers go just go to shop and buy pesticide and say just give me anyone once you give them they don't even read it label they just pour it pour to cover they pour it inside and they spray it so at the end of the day you find that that's where you hear stories where maybe you see a family that hurt this night and five people died Maybe what the, the food they just bought and cooked, maybe the beans, the pesticides are still smell, are still there, are still active, and that's why it's affecting them. So all these regulations, we don't have it, and that is why we could not export. And that is the main challenge. Our food doesn't meet quality, it doesn't have standard. Like, it's like, I always tell people, I say, we feed on poison here. That most of the poison we feed on is what is affecting us. And that's why you see increase in cancer, increase in this. You see people raising crowdfunding for health issues and everything to pay medical bills. We I rather, I wrote something recently. I said, people don't pay attention to their food until when the doctor has to prescribe and say, don't eat this again, don't eat this again. For us to meet international standard, we need trainees, simple trainees, agricultural trainees. For instance, we used to have extension officer before on the farm. I know we used to have extension officer, but recently there's no extension officer anyway. You can't find extension officer anyway. The reason is this, because even the extension officers need retraining. You know what I mean? Because what we've learned there in schools, in agriculture and everything, is not what is happening there. The world is really changing. But unfortunately, we don't have anything, anybody to do that for us. So because we first need, one, we need trainings, good agricultural practices, which include pesticide use, which include good soil management, which include using the correct seed when you are planting. Because once we can put all these things into places and then encourage more people to be on the farm, I think we are on the right way to go. You see, I used to tell, I used to tell people, uh, I see agriculture as the easiest way for us to increase our economy. I, because why did I think so? One, it is the, for instance, we are rich, we are blessed in Nigeria, we are massively blessed. Why, we are massively blessed in the sense that we have a lot of land masses. I was telling somebody the other time, I said, imagine if each local government, we have 774 local government, if I'm right, Imagine if each local government can just dedicate 100 acres each to one specific crop of which they have advantage. For instance, if my local government can bring out their own 100 acres and the government supervises it, they sponsor it, and these 100 acres, they are able to produce pineapple. Another local government again producing orange. Another local government again with purple. Maybe you understand what I mean? Imagine what we'll have. Definitely some local government will produce the same crops and then we'll have enough for export. With that, we earn money. Not only export, we still have to feed those people that are working there. Poverty, for instance, if you go to the village, on dry naira is a lot of money. I stay in the village side, I understand how they relate. On dry naira is a lot of money. Farmers produce crops and at the end of the day, they won't see anybody to come and buy it. Let me put an instance. Currently, cassava in my place, cassava in my village, farmer has plenty of cassava. A whole pickup, you know what I mean by pickup? A pickup of cassava right now is selling for 10,000 naira. You understand? 10,000 naira. The same pickup was sold last year for 150,000 naira. So now, can you see the drop? 
You understand? One, there's no regulation. Two, because there's no uh, market, there's no market control. You know what I mean? And so because of that, right now, farmers are lamenting on the farm. With this, how do you want to eradicate poverty? You understand? Because when you say produce, people run to the farm, they produce, then there will be excess and there will be nobody to absorb it. And because there's nobody to absorb it, then we are back to zero level again. They will run back again. But if there's a, I, I understand there used to be a marketing board before. With a marketing board, with preservations, with everything, then life can be better for everybody. Yes, the book, How to Farm Profitably in Nigeria, came into existence based on, the, people have been asking me, you've been on the farm all these days, you always teach, you have been training, what have your experience been, what is it all about? So I decided to compile the challenges on the farm. Challenges started from soil selection, challenges, start, challenges from soil selection to the seed, you need to use the right, using the right number of seed, plant populations, pollinations pesticide. So I pick all those topics, I explain the challenges, and I take my time to explain the solutions to it. And I tell everyone that if you can follow it step by step, use the book, follow it step by step, don't skip any step, you'll be glad you're in the farm. Because see, every year you see people, they collect their pension money, they run to the farm. When they get to the farm, at the end of the day, because they have no knowledge, they have no experience, they have anything, they squander the money, or let me say, it gets waste, and then they run back again. That is why we are not having progress in the agricultural sector. So the book is there to, ask, to tell, to put anyone through, to a beginner, even people that have been in the farm before. I tell people, I say, even if you have been in the farm before, just go through the book. They will see a lot of things you need to change, or a lot of things you are not doing right. How to source for labor, how to handle, you see a lot of things you are not doing right that you need to completely change for you to get profit in the farm. Like I tell people, a lot of people just spend on the farm. They don't even know what they are bringing out. They don't know if they're making profit or not. But with the book, you'll be able to say, okay, look, I spent this, I did this, this is how I did this, and at the end of the day, I was able to make this. Do I continue or do I stop? But I believe they will really want to continue. Our training comes up every two months, every other month. For instance, the, news, the set on farm now, they resume September. Another set will be resuming November and then followed by January. How do we do that? We, and when the youth comes for training, we put up trainees, they come, we've been at the training for the past three years. People come for training. When they come to the farm, we put them through all the basics, just like the soil, everything that is involved, how they can manage their farm, how they can undo your farm to make it profitable. So by the time we put them through and they have the experience, they now go, they can now go out to go and some decide to manage their home farm. There are three alternatives there. You can decide to say, look, I have land in my place. I want to go and manage my farm. You go there, but you still call us for technical support. The second one is that we provide free land for every youth that has passed through our training. We give them one acre land free for them to practice. You know, why we do that is that, you see, when you go, you don't need to just quickly go and buy land, but start practice somewhere. Then you can decide, okay, I want to continue. And with that, you still have ease your expenses on the farm. So we give free land. And then the third option, for people that, okay, look, ah, I don't want to stay. I need to go and get a job. I need a job. We fix them up. Like I said, we have many people that are working in some other places and they need to farm. They want to farm. They have interest. They have passion. But they cannot be there. They cannot have be in these two places at the same time. So they request, look, I need a farm manager. I need somebody to manage my snail farm. I need somebody to manage my crop. I need somebody to do this. So what we do is after the training, for those ones that perform very well and did responsibly, we fix them or we link them up to go and work. So we have a lot of people. So far, we have a lot of people outside that are working in different places for people that, home, that has farms and we follow it up. How government can assist us? Is it? You see, uh, when you, like I said, when we are on the farm, there are a lot of you that want to come. Number one, government can assist by helping to train more youth. You see, most times I see a lot of them will send me messages and say, ah, look, I need, I need trainings, I need training. What we do is we give scholarship. But the scholarship we go, we can't give it to everybody. At times we give few scholarships. At times we have sponsors that say, look, I want to sponsor two students. I want to sponsor three students. We take that, do that. Then again, where government can assist is machineries on the farm. When we talk of simple machineries, we are talking of working tractors. There's a tractor. It's not a big tractor, just a small tractor to make the bells. They are very easy. We are talking of brush cutters. We are talking of irrigation equipment. Let me explain something. In other countries where we say they are really making money from exporting, they are using, they don't wait for rain. In Nigeria, we wait for rain. 
like rains falls only five or six months in a year. I'm not talking of Lagos. I'm talking of the farm area because Lagos is closer to the coastal area, so they always have water. But I'm talking of the farm area. In the farm, in the city, in the rural areas, rains fall just six months in a year. And that six months, farmers grow crops. So, but the remaining six months, like from starting from this month, farmers will be on holiday till April next year. You see, those months are wasting away. But let's assume we have irrigation. We don't have to be bold. There's something we call rain harvest. We dig a dams, we locate dams and everything. With the irrigation system, farmers can grow all year round. As in, it's not, their farm is not going to be seasonal again. Waiting for rain fed at this stage we have is just wasting our time. So what government can help us to do is water, availability of water, irrigation system, make, then getting the seed to plant. Is, there's no company in Nigeria that is producing seed. We import seed. And at times you even need the seed, you might not get access to it. So getting the seed is another thing government can come in to assist with. Irrigation, seed, and every other thing. But they are youth, they are willing people that are ready to work. And then when we talk of storage facilities, you see every year, every year by April, every year by January to March, farmers in the north produce maxim, maximum number of tomatoes. But when, it get to, when you now get to the market, there's no storage facilities for it. You know, they are perishable goods, so it goes to waste. Or they start begging people, come and buy. A basket, that, a basket will be selling like 500 naira. A big basket of 30 kg, 50 kg, 500 naira. Then let like those three months pass. You understand, when we finish harvesting the ones we plant at that season, then we enter the period where there will be nothing. And then that same basket that was sold for 500 naira last month will now be selling for 30,000 this month. Why? Because we don't have preservative method. We need preservative method. I learned in Kenya, what they did, they, they built something they call chakokula in rural areas. With the chakokulas, farmers can harvest, store their crops there, even for two weeks before moving into the market. But you know, we need, that's the places where government 